Welcome to Prince of Peace Parish. My name is Father Paul Klein. Our feast day is the memorial of St. Barnabas the Apostle. We gather ourselves in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. St. Barnabas joined with St. Paul in preaching the gospel and the conversion of many Jewish and Gentile people. Uh, he called them to repent and turn away from sin. As we begin this celebration, let us call the mind God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you send your spirit to reconcile sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us of our sins. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We're using the, the pews with the blue brown tape, not the blue tape. Brown tape. Sorry, Donna. <laughs> Let us pray. O God, who decreed that St. Barnabas, a man filled with faith and Holy Spirit, should be set apart to convert the nations, grant the gospel of Christ, be strengthened, strenuously preached, and may be faithfully proclaimed by word and deed. We pray this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity to the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Now let us listen to God's word. Apostles chapter 11. In those days, a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. And he arrived and saw the grace of God. He rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart, for he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Now there were in the church at Antioch teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, who was a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is Psalm 98. Uh, the congregational response is, The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to his nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord, the Lord has, has revealed, revealed to, to the, the nations, nations his saving, his saving power. power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Go and teach all the nations, says the Lord. 
I am with you always till the end of the world. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading of the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts. No sack for the journey, or a second tunic, or sandals, or a walking stick. For a lepers his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it. And stay there until you leave. As you enter the ha a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Most of adults one time or another, have had to go through a job interview. Before one goes to an interview, it's best to be prepared to know what the job description entails and be prepared, prepared to answer the questions the interviewers might ask. One of the toughest interviews I had was when I applied for my first teaching position. I arrived to the superintendent's office and was taken to a conference room. There were about four or five people at the table, and it felt like I was pummeled with questions, and question after question, for me it seemed like an eternity, but probably it was an hour or so, and I found out the next day the job, but even though I knew the job description, even though I was prepared in my training at the University of Nebraska, I soon discovered I had a lot to learn. I taught for a couple years, and before I left the teaching career, I felt very successful at it. Sure, I had a lot to learn yet, but then I went on to seminary. Today, we celebrate the memorial of St. Barnabas. He was chosen to be an apostle, not by an interview, by casting lots. I imagine there was some type of vetting process, but the, the apostles leaned heavily on God for their selection. After Barnabas was chosen, he got right to work preaching the gospel, and he was very good at it. And even though he wasn't one of the original apostles, he was considered an apostle because of his apostolic preaching. Later, he was teamed up with St. Paul, who, if we remember, his original name was Saul. It seems to me that this was done for two reasons. First, to give St. Paul with the Jews. After all, the Jews remembered all too well how St. Paul, who was former Saul, had persecuted them and even stoned the Stephen the deacon. And it also seems that they teamed them together because they made a good preaching team. And they were known to get many converts from the Jewish community and the Gentile community. The gospel today lays out the job description for the apostles. Number one, go out and preach the good news. The kingdom of God is here. And then he goes on to tell them to go out, heal the sick, expel demons, cleanse, cleanse lepers. He called them to be humble, to trust in God more than trust in their own resources. And to trust that people would provide for their needs. So don't take a lot of money change of clothes, but trust that God provide for them food and shelter. Although we are not apostles, by our baptism, we are to share in the apostolic mission, to share the good news that the kingdom of God is here, that God is still here, God is still alive. As Christians, we have a similar job description, but I think it can be best summarized in the corporal works of mercy. The hungry, give drink to the thirsty, shelter the homeless, visit the sick, Visit the prisoners, bury the dead, give alms to the poor. 
It may seem like a tall order to you and sometimes to me too. As a, apostles were asked to be humble, so are we. We were asked not to rely on our own resources. If we did, we'd never get it done. But to God, His grace, our sweat, and also to rely on one another, that we are a community. The disciples had encountered Jesus, and that encounter was a great relationship, and so they enjoyed spending time in prayer. And they gathered as a community of believers for mutual aid and support. We have encountered Jesus in word and sacrament. But we need to continue to nourish this relationship through daily prayer. Some are called to pray more than others, like the monks and the religious sisters. They have various times during the day to pray. Usually they have an hour of adoration. Some pray a little less, but we are all called to pray. Pray every day in our own way. And my experience is the more you spend time in prayer, the more you want to pray. In doing that, the Holy Spirit will empower us to do God's work on earth more than we can dream or even imagine. Now that we are able to have a congregational mass, I invite you to attend when you can. Uh, it's best if we spread it out so we don't get so full on the weekends. So some of you are here for a weekday mass when there are less people. It's a big church, so you can easily social distance in this church on a weekday. And when we come, then we can encounter Jesus and, and the Word made flesh. And we can receive the Eucharist, the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ. Many people have responded to their baptismal call during this pandemic. They have been practicing the corporal works of mercy. Some are visiting the sick via Zoom or FaceTime or calling people on the phone. Many, many people have been reaching out, helping to feed the hungry through USA meals, hot meals, and so many other ways. And so many people in our own parish have been generous to our Prince of Peace charities and the Jubilee Center and, I, uh, and other charity organizations so that we continue to assist people with housing and utilities. And I know some parishioners who have visited with me are writing letters to prisoners. And of course, when someone dies, we will always minister to those who've lost a loved one and bury their dead. Because of this pandemic, our world will never be the same. It has brought out a lot of good in many people and maybe not so good in some others. Today, let us choose Christ. Let us choose to do the good. Let us choose to say yes to the invitation to being an active Christian. It is a life worth living. Please stand. Trusting in God's promise, we present our concerns with confidence. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders in the church, that we may never preach themselves, but only Jesus, making themselves true servants for his sake, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, that we may listen to God as he proclaims peace for his people, that truth may spring out of the earth and justice met with kindness for all people, we pray to the Lord. For the power of forgiveness and the grace to settle with our sisters and brothers who have anything against us before approaching the altar of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. For all our intentions, especially those names listed in our bulletin, those recommended to our prayers, for all those who are in distress of mind and body, especially those who are suffering because of the pandemic, that the freedom that comes from the Spirit of the Lord may be their healing, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all who have died and gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, that they may be gazing on the Lord with unveiled faces in the glorious kingdom of peace and joy. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all our intentions, especially for the intention of Mary and Jerry O'Rourke, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, you refresh us with the food we need. Hear our prayer and lead us to your holy mountain. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Please stand. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify with your blessing, we pray, O Lord, the offerings presented here, so that by your grace they may set us on fire with the flame of your love, by which St. Barnabas brought the light of the gospel to the nations, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those who have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with the angels, the archangels, the thrones and dominions, with all your hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory without end as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. The highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, O Lord Jesus Christ. On the day he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks and praise. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be shed for you and for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, And whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, with all the bishops, the priests, the deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes that we may see the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us words and actions to comfort those who labor in our burden. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people be raised up to new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit to them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Barnabas, and all the saints, we shall praise you and exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with the will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. You may wave at each other, but you can't shake hands. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be with you always. You may offer each other a sign of peace. Lena, you want to help with communion? God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. I'm of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy of you. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of eternal life, we humbly implore you, Lord, that we declare in sacramental signs on the memorial of the blessed apostle Barnabas, we may one day behold unveiled through Christ our Lord. Amen. So after Stephen turns off the camera, he'll fetch a couple buckets. So you guys, if you would please just clean your spot, that would be appreciated. Um, You just spray it with the bottle, wipe it so it's nice and dry. Um, make sure you, if you have any, if there's any literature, bulletins you want to take, please take them home. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and preach the gospel. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Directly following the end of Mass, I'll put out the Eucharist for adoration. O Jesus, we adore you, O in your love divine, conceal your mighty Godhead in forms of bread and wine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. 